Hello and welcome to another video where you cannot delegate communication. I'm Melanie Wood and I am your communication and leadership speaker. Now today I want to focus on a question that I'm asked all the time. How can I be a better communicator? Is where people ask me all the time. And I say to become a better communicator, you need to be able to become a better listener. So they become partnered, listening and communicating. But the more that we can listen, the more that we speak, the better the communicator you're going to be. So if you are a manager, leader, emerging leader, or business owner with teams, then stick around for this video today where I'm going to be able to teach you three steps to have coherent communication. So I love everything to do with connecting with people, coming from the heart, being authentic, being vulnerable, and really listening to the essence of what you're saying and listening to the essence of what other people say as well. So if you find that in your organization, people are continuously jumping in and finish the, finishing your sentence, or you find yourself jumping in and finishing their sentences without actually listening or in your head, you know what you're going to respond with. So then you're not present listening to that person and what they're saying. So this is all about becoming present, really listening and not thinking of your own response because you want to jump in there and finish it for them. Or you want to, you've not got much time left and you want to just quickly get it done. So then nobody's seen and heard, nobody's listened to. And as humans, that's all we want is to be listened to and understood. It starts with you and it starts with your teams to lead that way. So it's time to step up, step out and lead yourself and lead your teams with coherent communication. So let's get into it. So step one is really about planning and preparation before you even begin that conversation or begin that meeting. You want to set an intention of what you want out of the meeting or conversation and what you want other people to gain from it as well. So you want to be, might be for you, respectful of others' views and situations. You might have people that have different ideas, suggestions, opinions. It doesn't mean that yours is wrong. It means that you want to have open communication. So again, in other videos, we've spoken about psychological safety. Then this is one of them to be able to have that respect for everybody in that scenario. So number one, set an intention of what you want to create in that conversation or meeting and come into it with an open mind of what's the other person going to bring and be okay with that as well. So then we move into step number two is that planning and preparing, having time before going into that meeting or that conversation. Because if you're putting fires out, running from one thing to the next, and then you go into a meeting, you've not even had a chance to do number one, set the intention and your tone, and the same for everybody else, tone might not be genuine. It might not be considerate of other people because stress levels have risen. It's another thing that you have to do and everybody else has to do as well. So what are you going to say and how might it affect other people? So it's all in the planning and preparation. You really want to think about what do they need to know? What's the essence of what I want to say? And what's my point that I want to get across today? That's number two. Step number three is that once you have communicated what you need to communicate, then this is where you really want to listen to the essence. This is where the act of listening comes into it. Reflect the essence of actually what you're hearing from everybody else coming back to you and open to refinement and also to get that confirmation of mutual understanding. So it's the downfall and the gap that I see all the time when I work with clients is that going into a meeting and there's been no, not much planning and preparation. And then you have the meeting and then 
the things that actually aren't getting done that you have asked people to get done. Or people come back to you and they have all the excuses of the reasons why they can't do it and all of these. And then you start to maybe get defensive or barrier comes up because you're wanting to react or to respond without listening to the essence of what they're saying. So yes, they might be, they might be coming up with all the excuses and everything else happening, but then you don't get to the root cause of what's actually going on to find a solution. So it's about listening. It's about prompting with questions, listening, and really listen to the essence of what's going on. And now this will take time to do that, especially if it's not something that you do all the time, then look at it as the next time you do this is practice. Get curious to why people are responding or reacting the way they are, to giving you excuses to why something hasn't been done and there's something else going on and they're just not able to communicate that to you. So it's then up to you to listen for the essence, prompt with questions, and really get to that mutual understanding of where the team is, you are, the other person is, and coming to that solution together so that it's not one person making demands, telling, but it's also, again, you want to have boundaries as well. And if you don't come to a solution there and then, come back to it another day. But I really want you to think about what's not being said. So the essence is about what's not being said in the meeting or by other people. That's where you really want to get to. And the prompting questions is having open-ended questions and not using lines like, um, does that make sense? Because majority of people will go, even though they don't, but they just don't feel like they can say it otherwise because everybody else in the room is nodding. And that person doesn't want to be the only one saying no. So we have to be able to ask open-ended questions to get the mutual understanding or what other people maybe need help and support with, where you could be asking, what can I do to help and support you more with the current situation that you're going through? And that's what's going to lead you to that mutual understanding and to be able to break away from people nodding and agreeing and being like everybody else in the room because they're scared to, to do that. So it's about you leading and using prompts and questioning, listening to the essence and getting to that mutual confirmation and understanding. I hope this has been helpful for you today to really build and develop that coherent communication with active listening. And um, I hope that this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments how you're going with all of these videos. If you have any questions or comments, please do below. Um, I'd love to hear your progress as well. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do now so that you can keep up to date each week with all of these videos with my top tip steps to be able to help you with communication. Because remember, you cannot delegate communication. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.